Hi, I'm Eva here at Breva Creative, and today I will be making a lapel necklace. So I'm going to be making a lapel as if from a suit jacket or a blazer. I'm going to make just the lapel kind of as a standalone piece, like a necklace or a scarf or something like that. Um, so today to do that, I have chosen a fabric that I think will look nice. It is this black velvet. I spent about 10, 20 minutes getting all the cat fur cleaned off of that scrap piece of velvet. This is the blazer that I will be copying. It's this nice gray standard blazer. It's got a nice long lapel that I like and it's nice and skinny, it's not too broad. I didn't want a broad one. So that's that, let's get to work. So I'm using the selvage of the fabric, that's the factory edge of the fabric, to make sure that everything is square. I'm using that as my straight edge and I'm folding all my lines parallel and or perpendicular to that to make sure everything is nice and squared up with the weave of the fabric. So switching angles so you can see what I'm doing, I am going to now trace the shape of this lapel. All right, so I'm gonna take my jacket and just kind of figure out the shapes that I'm gonna to want to copy. Because this is a whole jacket, um, I just want the folded over bit for the lapel. So I don't really have a seam to guide me, it's more of a fold, so I'm just gonna mark that real quick with chalk just to kind of give myself a line to follow when I'm marking it down on my fabric. Just kind of follow the fold and you should be able to get the shape that you're looking for. So now I'm just gonna lay out that marked lapel so that the long edge runs along the selvage. Making sure that it runs straight along with the selvage will help with preventing it from stretching out. When you run shapes along the diagonal, it's called a bias and it tends to lose its shape and stretch in ways that I don't want for this current project. So kind of move your fabric around as needed to get your mark down on the fabric and say hi to Mr. Mo, the little troublemaker. And Mo is still in the way, but I think we can work around that little buddy. Let's see, dude. Can I do a straight line free-handed? That's not bad. Not bad. Okay, we're gonna let Mo inspect the work for a second and get set up for cutting our next shape. So next we're going to do the back of the collar and I'm folding this in half and using my folded edge to make sure that everything is nice and symmetrical and I don't have to guess on how to make both sides match each other. It's just easier, cuts the work in half, so let's do that. It was a little harder to follow this piece because there were several edges that I didn't really have access to. I had to like flop the jacket up and down several times to make sure everything was lined up, but I think I got a pretty accurate trace of what this shape should be. And again, if you feel comfortable freehanding, feel free to do that. It's always good practice. Alright, perfectionists, close your eyes because I'm going to freehand the seam allowance. So we're going for something around the standard 3 eighths, 5 eighths, I don't know what the standard is. I'm going at just under a half an inch, so I guess that's closer to 3 eighths. And just freehanding an outline of this all the way around. Since I have the actual line of where I want to sew, it's not such a huge deal that this is kind of uneven in shape. I will be sewing right along that inside chalk line and I will cut the seam allowance down afterwards so it doesn't really matter that it's not exactly perfect. I always love cutting with my giant sewing shears. They're just so much fun to chop things with. So we're just gonna chop around that line, maybe even it up a bit. If there's a spot that's obviously uneven, I'll just fix that as I'm cutting. 
And I will be actually doubling both of these shapes since I have one of the folded back side. I need two of those, so I will trace that in a second and recut it out. And same with the lapel, so I have a left and a right. Next, I'm gonna cut out some interfacing, and I only need one layer of interfacing in each side of the lapel, so I'm just gonna trace this once, and same with the back. This is going to help stiffen and uh, kind of help me control the shape and the rigidity of my finished piece. Interfacing usually has a adhesive that's activated by an iron, so once I get this sewn into the piece, I can iron it and it will stick to the inside of the fabric and hold everything nice and stiff. On the back, because I want the collar to be able to stand up nicely, I'm actually going to do two layers of interfacing. I don't know if this is correct, but I figure double the interfacing equals double the rigidity, so hopefully it works. And of course, chop that out exactly the same as everything else. And I did include the seam allowance in the interfacing. Technically, you probably don't need extra interfacing on the seams, but it's easier to just kind of sew everything together. So again, technical correctness aside, I'm just going to make this work for me. And that's how making is for me. I like to add my own bits of creativity that may not technically be correct. But hey, if it works, that's all that matters right now. So now that I have all my pieces cut out, I need to kind of sort them and organize them by how I'm gonna sew them together. So I'm actually gonna sew the short seams at the kind of notch in the lapel before I sew the sides together. So I'm just gonna sew this little seam here and the same on the other side to make sure that we have one big piece of the front of the collar and the same with the back. And then turn it inside out and come back and sew it together. So here you wanna make sure that your interfacing is facing the correct direction. There's adhesive on one side, but not on the other. And I want my adhesive to face the front of the lapel uh, because that side's gonna have the most rigidity in the end. So I want that to be on kind of the face of the lapel. So I've actually decided to cut out the seam allowance off of the interfacing because I don't want that extra bulk like I said so I'm gonna chop that out before I sew it on while I'm pinning um, in the hopes that we get those seams to lay down nicely. I've always been more haphazard in my sewing habits and I don't usually use pins but I know technically I need that here so I'm going to throw a couple in in the hopes that it fixes everything. And as you can see here because of my lazy pinning the pins are actually causing more wrinkles than preventing them which is not their purpose and that's my bad. But we're just gonna power through because that's how I do things around here. And of course, at these corners, stop your sewing machine, lift the foot, and turn your fabric so that there are no extra wrinkles.
and now the other side. All right, so now that that's all sewn together, I'm going to come back and trim the seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch. And like with any inside corner, when you turn this inside out, it's gonna pull a bit, so you actually have to get super close to the inside of that corner so that it turns inside out properly. Just make sure you don't actually chop the seam that you made because then your thing will fall apart. And as you can see, velvet is a mess always. There's little bits of pile everywhere that I'm just going to fold right into the inside and ignore because I can't be bothered to pull all of them off of the thing. So again, I've got a gap here at the center of the neck, kind of the back of the neck there, and I'm just going to use that to pull everything inside out, and hopefully that works. Turn it inside out like a sock, stuff everything into the one side, and pull it out. And you get as close as you can with just pulling it and then grab something pointy. I'm using a crochet hook, you could use a pencil or a skewer or something and just tuck that in there and that'll help you kind of push out the corners a bit.
to give it kind of a necklace feel, but also so that it doesn't like slide too much like this. When you're wearing it, just kind of a little loop of chain. I don't know, I think that is a nice way to finish this off. So here I have a piece, uh, a necklace that I found at a thrift store here. And I've actually already used a chain off of it. It kind of came with three chains and I, I literally just picked this up because I liked the chains. I was never gonna actually wear this necklace. Um, but that's a good way to find kind of random bits of chain if you only need a couple inches of anything. Let's go find it at the thrift store. So I'm gonna take these loops here and try to detach a segment of this chain. See if these pliers are strong enough. Oh. Use my broken diagonal cutters in a way that they should not be used, but hey, there we go. Let's twist that apart. I can pull that end off. And then do that again over here. There we go. So that's about what, four or five inches of chain. And that's perfect. We're gonna attach that one end to each of these. So it'll hang nicely kind of at the end of the lapel. So here I ended up kind of tucking the chain into the bottom of these corners because these were such tight corners they didn't actually push out entirely so they're not all the way unfolded on the inside no matter how much I was going to push they just weren't going to go any further so I used that kind of inside out bit on the very very end to tuck my chain into and actually made it a tiny bit more secure so it worked out in the end that those corners didn't turn out quite as sharp as I was planning And we're back. Here's the lapel. I put it over a white tee just to give it the most basic look. I kind of love it. I'm going to have to wear this one of these days, maybe to an office Christmas party or a cute dress or just to the office in general over maybe a collared shirt or something. But it also would be great at parties. It's got a little bit of a punky vibe if you dressed it up just right and I absolutely love it. Also, it's kind of cool to turn up and do kind of a popped collar, vampy sort of look. It would be great with some dark lipstick or something like that. I absolutely love it. I'm gonna have to try to make this in a couple other colors as well because I think I'm going to add it to my wardrobe. I think I will definitely wear this. So, let me know what you think of this video and absolutely let me know if you try this at home tag us at breva creative or comment below anything and of course as always give us a like hit the subscribe button ring the little bell if you want to see more of our videos and peace